So welcome everybody uh, at this webinar. And it's for me really a, a, a great honor to be here. And I have to thank the Penke Institute and uh, Lee Brady, obviously, uh, and all the team, because there's a big team around the Penke Institute uh, that organize, organizes many, many um, events, okay? as well as this one. So thanks again. And uh, uh, my name is Riccardo Mannato. I'm Italian and I'm actually at the moment in Italy. And um, I'm presenting, I've already been there at the Penke Institute uh, last year at the Master Week. It was very, very nice. And uh, so here I'm presenting one of my preferred topics because I'm a restorative guy and uh, I do conventional, uh, conventional restorative on, on conventional dentition, okay? So direct and indirect. Plus I, one of my favorite topics, which I love very much is worn dentition, as you see here. So I have many patients, I see many patients having tooth wear, and I think also you guys, uh, wherever you are, US especially, but you see more and more these kinds of patients, okay? And uh, what we are going to see here, I just want to mention this um, to be correct, is a, a very, is going to be something more or less an hour, so it's going to be a very, very I'm not going to go into details because of time, obviously, but uh, we'll see later on, I will be at the symposium and then I'm going to deliver a course at the Bank Institute. So maybe if you want to then uh, go more in details, we have uh, the time also on, in, in person. However, here are my, uh, my email and here I have some courses online also, so we can uh, uh, connect even after the, the, the webinar, okay? And my um, uh, approach on worn dentition is a hybrid approach with direct and indirect in the same rehabilitation very often, not all the time, but very, very often is direct and indirect with composite and ceramic. So this is something that I want to highlight because it's, for me, very, very important. We'll go through all this very briefly because we don't have the time again. And we have a very, very short introduction. And then we go through a three cases plus one in the conclusion, just to share with you uh, a few interesting things from my perspective. So very briefly again, because here, Usually in, in my courses, I spend a lot of time on this aspect that belongs to the diagnostic part, which is in dentistry, but in medicine, it's something very, very important. Actually, it's the most important aspect that we have to uh, take care, uh, regardless what we will do after in our treatment plan, uh, whether it's going to be partial restorative, uh, direct, indirect, uh, adhesive dentist, whatever. So this part where we're going to spend very, very little time, but is the most important part, especially when we are dealing and managing worn dentition cases, which are very complicated and they're very risky for whichever kind of restoration we are going to place in that dentition, okay? Because what Mother Nature did, which is much better than me for sure, it has been, has, ha, has worn down, okay? So whatever I'm going to do is going to be much more stressed than in a conventional dentition. So. It's important in our uh, data collection uh, during our diagnostic uh, phase to go and analyze and understand which kind of where we are dealing with in that specific case. And we have physical causes with friction. I don't want to stay here that long, but friction is tooth against tooth, while abrasion is tooth against something that is like a toothbrush or whatever. Okay, then we have corrosion with the chemical causes, which is the most important and really increasing uh, year after year due to many aspects, okay? Uh, 
and especially stress, but many other aspects, and corrosion or erosion, uh, but corrosion is a bit more specific, it's more correct, uh, and it's the wear due to exposure to a tooth, to an acidic substance, substance that can be endogenous or exogenous, okay? So said this, which is very important then to go and understand <laughs> how, uh, which kind of wear this patient has, because from that we can decide also the kind of restoration we could prefer depending on the kind of wear that we have. Then another big chapter is the data collection and the data processing, okay? so all those cases all those cases we need to do a very deep data collection with photo radiographs maybe we can need other kind of radiographs we we need also to have our study cast mounted in, a, in the articulator in the mi position we need to do the the periodontal chart everything has to take in consideration um, very very deep Something that they do in this kind of cases, uh, also there, I um, go really in detail regarding this aspect, is the checking the muscles, okay, uh, all the muscles of the, of the face, and um, so this external in the initial part, and then internal inside the mouth, and the uh, TMJ, check everything, it's, if it's correct, if it's functioning. Obviously, we need to uh, communicate very well with the patient, the kind of situation that he has. So we need to talk a lot with the patient, but also go and check all these kind of aspects. And something very important that I also do that helps me very much, it's uh, the Brax Checker, which is this device, which is very, very important for, for us, for me and the technician and the team to uh, go and analyze in a diagnostic um, phase plus after the restorative treatment has uh, finished. We will just touch later on uh, this aspect. And when we have done the data collection, then we need to process all this data and because we need to do a diagnostic part, a prognosis, a general prognosis, then tooth by tooth, and then we need to assess the risk of that specific cage, which is another aspect very important, assess the risk, and then decide one or two or few options of treatment plan. And in the data processing, as you see here, we, we do all the things that we do in prosto, in regular prosto with our uh, mock-up. We have decided uh, based on an aesthetic and functional analysis how much to open the video, which usually do in this kind of cases in order to be less aggressive on, on the teeth that are already worn down. Okay, so we take advantage of this kind of aspect, deciding also where to put in CR position or in a more a neuromuscular position, so more forward, which I'm doing lately in the last year. However, raising up the vertical, it's a, a, an important aspect here that leads us to be less aggressive, which is in my kind of philosophy, something that I, uh, I really take care about, okay? So let's go back to our menu of uh, this webinar, where we're going to just see briefly this case one, where in the diagnostic aspect, where I don't want to go, you obviously, as I mentioned previously to time, let's say that just to give a number, we have around 100% of erosion, because you know better than me that usually tooth wear is also something that is cofactorial, so there's not all the time erosion, abrasion, or attrition. But very often there's a mixture because there's a blend of a erosion, maybe an attrition. So here, just to go and give some numbers, this first case that we're going to, uh, I'm going to share with you is, uh, uh, let's say 100% erosion, okay? And here, it was a case uh, done many years ago, around eight years ago. So 2015, I 
in this case, a, a, a fully digital uh, workflow. And this is the initial situation. Open up the vertical dimension. This is with a semi-adjustable articulator, okay? And in this case, I was starting from CR uh, a position. Based on an aesthetic and functional analysis, we open up the video as a convenience for the prosto uh, for, and the, for the restorative uh, work that then we plan to do. So the technician does the wax up, again, based on the fact, aesthetic and functional analysis, where we don't want to stay, but it's also there a big chapter, very, very important that we do together with the team, especially with the technician. And this was the, the, the two STL files of this wax up, digital wax up. Okay, then what happens, the, the, the technician will, will uh, through a milling machine or a 3D printer, uh, we, we will have the, the, the sets of, of models, sextant by sextant, okay, in this case. And what is happening here, I'm going to uh, build on the restorative wax up, I'm going to build a, build an index, a transparent index, which is going to be the is going to copy uh, the restorative work in order then to go and paste it on the worn uh, dentition. And you see here the technician is delivering to the clinic the the, the wax up, okay? With the this is um, uh, with the not with the 3D printer, but with the milling machine. Okay, and for each sextant, I have the indexes that initially, now how you see them right here, I'm going to use them to do the provisionals, which are additive mockups in the full mouth. So on the six sextants, okay, these are my additive mockups, my provisionals in order to go and test like we do in conventional prosto, we go and test static, phonetic, function, static, the new dynamic, the new overjet, overbite, all that kind of stuff, okay? And uh, so you can, you can see here, I've also removed the four wisdom tooth in this patient based also on what I, the foundings on the Brax checker. And um, here we're going to go and do the copy paste for each sextant, the six sextant is, you see it here on, on the lower left, but I place it obviously in the full mouth. And when we have done our uh, uh, test drive, let's say that could be for five days, 10 days, a month, depending on the findings on the diagnostic aspect, then if it is a case like this one where in my kind of <laughs> approach, I manage it with a full molding through my technique that you see here and also my website. If you want, you can download the articles that you, see, you have here. And uh, I, if there are the indications, we can go through this copy paste approach with the index technique. So what I'm going to do with the um, a surgical blade, as you see here, I'm going to go and cut each index that was the one that we used to do the, 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 the mock-up, sextant by sextant. Uh, I'm going to cut it in between, uh, right across the interproximal area. Okay, so in order to achieve six single indexes. So once we have done that, I'm going to obviously go and do my copy paste approach. Okay. What I usually call it, this molding approach, it's a copy paste because we are copying the, 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 the wax up that together with the technician, we, we decided to do, and I'm going to paste it without any kind of preparation. It's all no prep doing adhesion, no kind of preparation. I'm going to paste it on the worn dentition as you see here. So I'm going to do one sex that at a time, you see here the, the second molar and then I'm going to do the first molar and the two uh, premolars. And this is the end of this sextant. Obviously we have done the whole dentition. So the four posterior sextant 
plus the two anterior sextant two and sextant five. You can see here a detail of the this approach, the copy paste approach, where I'm copying what the technician has developed and I'm going to paste it on the worn dentition without any kind of uh, preparation, all additive or no prep. Then we go after we're done the, the posterior, I go, I step on the anterior and I'm going to do the same kind of approach. It's going to be so a full molding on sextant two and then on sextant five, again, without no kind of preparation at all, only addition and then the copy paste approach. Here is the composite that I'm using because in this case is a, a direct approach, copy paste direct approach. And here we have the heated up composite because for this kind of technique, I use a composite that is, is heated up, warmed up in the oven, uh, in an oven. And so raising up the vertical, obviously we need to uh, reestablish a new overbite and a new overjet. So in sextant two, at the end of the story is a full molding. So we are going to add on the usually on the on the buckle, on the incisal, and then at the same time also on the internal part, part on the palatal side, because we have to reestablish a new <clears throat> overbite and a new overjet, okay, to give the function not only the aesthetics. So here we're just placing the composite, placing the, the index that also in the posterior, but again also in the anterior, I've done the trying in before, and then we are curing with usually two lights, to cure in lights through the transparent index in order to, <laughs> to have a conversion of our composite material. Then when we are done, when, when we have done a rough finishing of the first central incisor, um, number eight, then we're going to step to number nine and we're going to apply our heated composite. And then we are going to do also here the copy paste approach. So here we have a situation of the full uh, uh, mouth. We didn't mm, put in our restorative work, uh, we didn't add the upper second molars because there was no need to do any kind of restorative there. Obviously, raising up the vertical, we did add also because we had wear on the two second lower model or, or also to give stability to the TMJ okay, in the static situation. And here we have just the detail of the anterior aspect. So this is all the composite that we place with the, the, on the upper and on, 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 on the lower. And this is a three years follow-up. This is a, <clears throat> uh, this is a, from another perspective, from the occlusal side, and you see the, again, the, the, the copy-paste approach in, in this kind of <clears throat> situation. And this is the functional side before and, <clears throat> and after. So now I would like to share with you a second case uh, where it's not anymore, let's say 100% erosion, but or corrosion, which is even better as I mentioned previously, but we have <clears throat> around 70% of corrosion and around 30% of attrition. So, and the patient we have seen before, she's 22 years old. Now this patient that I'm going to share with you, he's 23 uh, years old. So very young patient. <clears throat> he had more wear that was localized on, on the, the, the previous case was generalized. This is more localized on the anterior, but he had also somewhere on the posterior, especially on the lower posterior, but especially here on the anterior. You see here, 23 years old. So also here, he has some attrition, but also a, a erosion. So here, uh, if we compare with the other case, I went through a, an individual, um, articulator, okay, with this, the reference, which is a, a the another kind of articulator where we can, is the Slavicek, let's say, articulator where we have, we can individualize everything about <laughs> this patient. And so without going further too much in details regarding this aspect, in, in this aspect, I just wanted to uh, highlight that 
when you go for individual, maybe you are more, more precise, but you can work in a semi-adjustable or in individual in an individual situation. And it's both are good uh, from my perspective. So here was analog, if we compare with the uh, previous case. And so the technician is delivering the, the project, the restorative project. And usually again, he's giving me one, or maybe I prefer, as you see here, two indexes per each sextant, because one is going to be a backup, okay? If anything goes wrong, I, I, I cut it, I lose it, I cut it wrong or whatever, okay? So provisionals or mockups for the whole dentition in order to check again, um, aesthetic function, opening up the video, uh, the static situation, the dynamic, all that kind of stuff. The phonetic also is very important to check with the mockups on. And so usually the mockups, if they have to stay not that long, five, 10 days, I usually take advantage of the undercuts in order to keep the mockups in place for that amount of time that is going to be short, five, 10 days. Otherwise I will do some line etching or spot etching in order to have some also a easy retention because it's going to maybe stay longer because I want to check the TMJs, the muscles and all that kind of stuff. And I usually also place below the, the contact areas, the contact points, I place a Teflon tape in order not to let go too much my uh, material, the the resin uh, for the mock-ups in between <laughs> and to give the opportunity the patient then since a splinted here sextant by sextant for the provisional aspect part uh, to give the opportunity the to the patient to go when I will remove the teflon tape to go with, with an interdental brush in order to try and clip, keep as clean as uh, possible. And you see here, this is it. We're going to just do the copy paste of the project, remove the excess material, and then <clears throat> we are done. We have checked everything, aesthetic, phonetic function. And now also in this case, in the posterior area, we had the indications, and we will see later, which are the contraindications uh, to do this copy paste approach through the index technique. So we have the heated up composite. Now we're going to just, we, land, we are landing after the try in of our index to check the fitting. Now we're going to land. Uh, we have done adhesion. We have, plastic, we have, paste, we have um, placed the material, the heated up composite. And now we are landing, okay, on the tooth. Now we're going to just, cure through the index and then we'll remove excess material that we have here. Some of it will stay below, but we're going to do a finishing with the same devices that we use, we use for direct and uh, partial indirect uh, restorative. Um, and we go from this situation to this kind of situation where we have done one, we have finished it, then we do the first molar and then the two premolars. And you see again, the concept of the uh, copy paste, I will share later with you something to stabilize the single index while molding. And you see here the copy paste approach at the uh, follow-up. Then once we have done the posterior, usually step on the interior, and you see the, 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 the technician has the indications on the indication on sextant two to stay away from the gum, okay, from the sulcus around two millimeters in order to let me do, uh, let me have here a landmark in order where my, my index is going to, um, it's my reference, my stop reference, my landmark for my copy paste on, on sextant two. Then we'll see later on something extra for stabilization of this index. However, so here I'm going to start from the two central incisors. So this I've done one, I've just done a rough finishing. Then I'm going to do the other central and then 
the laterals. And in this case, so that's why we're introducing now the, the hybrid approach. Uh, we have some attrition. So with attrition, composite, especially on the can I guidance, doesn't have the same behavior that lithium disilicate have, has. So what we, we mix materials depending also on the findings on the diagnostic aspect. So we have some attrition. So we need to think that composite with attrition, especially in canine guidance, is not going to have the same behavior or as a material like lithium disilicate. And this is a veneer that is, a, instead of being buccal veneer, is going to be a palatal incisor veneer. So we'll see later on that there is, is almost no prep also here, just a slight bevel on the incisal edge, okay? And for the rest is all no prep. And here we are just doing steps for the uh, adhesion aspect. And here I'm sharing with you a, a video. Maybe, I don't know, the music is going to be probably a little bit uh, too loud. I hope you can hear me. I will talk maybe a little bit louder. And uh, uh, what happens here is that I'm usually, I try my preference, uh, we can use a, a dual cure cement, but my preference is a heated up composite to go and cement this kind of veneers or my onlays, my overlays, I usually try and cement with a heated up regular uh, packable composite, okay? And you see here, I have my, the, the light of my unit is off and I'm just, we, we have seated with the system, uh, the, the restoration on the tooth, and we have no rush because it's not going to cure until I decide when to cure it. Because again, the light of the unit of the chair is off. So I have no rush. I can take all my time. So this is a particular moment where I don't want to rush. So I... We press it down little by little, and we remove the excess com composite that is heated up, that flows out the excess out of the, the restoration. You see it here, and the restoration here on the palatal aspect is short. The technician does it far away from the gun also here, the gum around two, three millimeters, because we have no need to reach the, the sulcus at all, so we can place our dam and we can work in an adhesive context, which is very, very important from my perspective. Okay, so uh, you see here, we are little by little seeking down the restoration. We are removing now the, the, the extra clamp that, that, I, that I placed. The system is pressing down. Again, the, the, rest, the restoration we have, have removed last excess that we had, and we cure with two curing lights while the system is keeping down the restoration in place, usually with two curing lights for three minutes, okay? And now we are doing the finishing. This is the uh, reciprocant handpiece, which I think is a very, very important instrument to have in restorative dentistry because it has a working side in a non-working site, so you will never go and touch the adjacent dentition while doing your finishing. It's a very useful uh, device. And here I'm doing a pre-polishing with this uh, uh, silicone point. And after that, I'm going to go with another silicone point that is going to polish the, the interface between the restoration uh, and the uh, the tooth. Then obviously I need to check the occlusal adjustments when <clears throat> I will remove the dam. So this is the end of this case where all the, the, from lateral to lateral is all composite, <clears throat> additive composite with no preparation. Instead here we have on the upper canines and on the lower canines, we have 
um, additive lithium disilicate. So I also try to put in antagonism the same kind of material, composite against composite, lithium against lithium, uh, or if we need to place a crown, zirconia against zirconia, for example. Okay, and you see here the interface between the lithium disilicate and the natural natural dentition. And this on uh, <clears throat> the other side, this is the inner part. And you see here that I'm short here, lithium disilicate, you see it very well here. Okay, and also our, let's here, you see it very well. This is the composite. Okay, so we are more or less two, three millimeters far away from the, the soft tissue in order to manage the restorative aspect. So I want to share now with you this third case, which is the opposite from the other one. Uh, so we have 70% of attrition and 30% of corrosion, okay? And there's another problem here. So the problems are raising because when we have more attrition, the case is going to be more complicated because usually with attrition, the patients can break more easily uh, whichever restoration we replace. And the other problem that we have here is that this patient is a, a colleague. So it's, she's a dentist. So again, that is another problem that we need to manage, okay? And she's around 40, 39, 40 uh, years old. And this is the initial situation. Can't obviously go through all the case we did the uh, ortho uh, to do to realign some stuff and to change some other things. And here is one of the sextants that I manage on the posterior. More or less, all the posterior sextants uh, sextants I manage through this approach, which is the hybrid approach. Because as you see here. I needed to remove before starting all the restorative procedures uh, of raising the vertical and all that stuff. I need to remove the old restorations, the, the restorations uh, that are defective, okay, that have some problems, carriers, or if I have to do any endodontic, uh, redo any endo, I have to do it before. If I need to solve any periodontal problem, I need to manage that before. So here I'm removing the old restoration, defective restoration that have carries and then if I'm cleaning everything. And here I need to do, a, even if I was in a conventional situation, I need to do a cavity analysis in order to understand if we can go for a, that direct uh, restoration for a partial indirect restoration or for a full uh, restoration okay so here we have all those walls that are very very thin so for sure for the two molars we need to uh, go for a full coverage whether it's going to be a full crown or a partial like an onlay or no overlay well instead and another aspect important just to differentiate from this molding approach and the um in indirect approach is when I don't have the interproximal areas, so the interproximal walls as here, while on the two premolars, we have the two interproximal walls here. So here, eventually, we could go standing to the indication to do this molding approach uh, with this copy paste. Okay, and so this the project here in this section, but again, more or less also on the other posterior sextants of this patient, I'm going to deliver two indirect, indirect restorations here and mm, two direct copy paste on the two uh, premolars through the index technique. Here, again, same kind of approach as you have seen in the last, uh, in the previous case, so the individual approach and usual stuff with the mock-ups because I want to do the try-in of everything, not only the static, the function, the phonetic and all that aspects that have to take uh, in consideration. And you see here the mock-up in this sextant, but again, was in the whole mouth. Here is the mock-up placed again after that 
we have done uh, the, the try-in of the mock-ups and we, I left it here, I think, for around a month. And then we have done the, pre the partial preparation for the two uh, molars. I got the impression here and we're going to place again our mock-ups, okay? Obviously in the full uh, dentition. And this is the day of the deliver, uh, delivery from the, the lab to the, <clears throat> to the clinic where I'm going to place on the first uh, uh, upper and lower molars and on the four canines, I'm going to, oh, that's why it's an hybrid approach, I'm going to place lithium disilicate. Okay, so this is a, an overlay lithium disilicate on the four first molars and on the four canines. You have here also some referencing about this aspect. And we have what I like to call it, we are just placing in this kind of approach, the four table legs, what I call them the four table legs in order to stabilize the occlusion because we have a patient with a lot of attrition. Okay, so canines and first molars. Then what is going to be needed for indirect, like also the second molar standing to an indication, we can place either lithium desilicate, or I like to place, uh, uh, like in this situation, a CAT cam composite monolithic, which usually works very well in this kind of context. Why I prefer this and not lithium desilicate, which I could also do it in lithium desilicate, it's because in this situation, I have the opportunity, which I think gives su sustainability to this case where I have a lot of attrition that if something chips, breaks, uh, cusp or marginal reach through time, I can very predictable uh, repair it, okay? Also lithium desilicate is repairable, but composite is more um, reliable to repair. So this is why I'm placing for an indirect on the second molar, for example, here, a CAD cam in composite. And so we go through the segmentation, don't want to stay here that long of the CAD cam composite. And, uh, and then I'm going to uh, all the adhesion there. And I'm going to do, once I've done the uh, curing on the second molar, I will do the copy paste on the first, on the second premolar, heated up composite, curing through the through the index, here we have some excess, okay? And then we're going to do the finishing. And this is the situation. Now I need to do the cementation of the lithium disilicate. So one of the legs, table legs. And here we have the cementation. And then I'm going to do also the copy paste approach direct on, on the first premolar. So we have two copy paste approach with direct composite, lithium disilicate and cat cam uh, composite here. Here in this video, which I cut a little bit, I just want to share with you again, this is the second leg, leg of the table here, okay? And just the copy paste approach here. Uh, so I've done already on the second premolar, the try in of the index without, uh, without the, the matrix in place. And I just want to, just to check the fitting and everything. Eventually, I need to do some trimming with a, with a surgical blade. I can't go too much in details. And then now I'm going. To, I placed my matrix, and I'm just going to place my either a wedge or some Teflon in the below the contact area in order to stabilize my uh, matrix. And then I will do again the try in of my index. <clears throat> I'm going to do the try-in uh, as soon as I've packed in my Teflon, usually also place it on the lingual side in order to stabilize my, 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 my matrix. You see that I, have, I need to have some flexibility, not too much, it's around 72 short. Uh, and you see here, it frees the image just to highlight this aspect with you because I have to go below the undercuts. So I need a little bit of flexibility here and now I'm just checking if it's fitting correctly the indexes the, the matrices lingual and uh, and buckle are inside my uh, my index 
And now I'm going to go through the, the adhesion. Okay, so here I'm using a three step action rinse. So 30 seconds of on enamel, around 15 seconds on, on the dentin. Then I'm going to rinse very well, around 30 seconds on rinsing to remove everything. And then I'm going to apply usually chlorhexidin primer and bonding. Okay, this is a free step again. It's not a universal, and uh, uh, which I also use. I use many kinds of adhesive systems. This is a free step, and I'm opening up the, the matrix in order to let go down the bonding in the interproximal area. Well, and then I'm going to air dry and to thin the, the bonding. And then I'm going to cure usually for 40 seconds, as you've seen with two curing lights. Then I have my heated up composite. I'm going to place, which is going to be maybe a universal or maybe I can place a dentin and an enamel. However, we have the posterior is not so important to that, that aspect like, like we could be or would be on the anterior area. And I just want to, pack my composite on the tooth in order to try and avoid any air bubbles, okay? Once I've done that, I'm closing in the, the matrices and I'm landing on the tooth. The assistant goes away with the spatula and just dropping on, landing on the tooth, and this is it, okay? I'm going to just remove some excess that flows out, okay, of this packable composite. When, I'm, when I've done this, two curing lines, I'm keeping the index with four fingers and I'm curing, okay? Usually one minute through the index and then another minute uh, without the index. This is the copy paste approach. Again, another minute usually with two curing lights and then this is the situation. So I'm going to remove my, uh, my matrix. Uh, I didn't have it on the distal side because they aren't going to go and cement the, the, the lithium disilicate, okay? So here, just with the scaler, remove some excess, going with the uh, reciprocant handpiece, you see the working uh, part of it, and it turns around, it flips around, so it's very, very useful and very, very fast. It speeds up the, the finishing procedure very, very easily. You see how it flips around, it turns around, it follows 360 degrees the, the, the tooth, okay? And once we are uh, sure that we did the correct uh, finishing, everything, everything is smooth, no problem, some also some disc, low speed with some with a disc in order to do the finishing of the final part of the of the interproximal ridge. And this is it. Okay, now I'm going to paste, I'm going to not paste, I'm going to cement for sure the, the first molar with the lithium uh, disilicate. Just checking if everything is moved, everything is, I remove um, excess material that was there. And so once we have done the posterior uh, with this hybrid approach, we go to the anterior area where again, also here, the four incisors were the upper and the four lower with this copy approach, copy paste approach for the index technique while on the four canines, lithium disilicate as you saw on the previous case with the, on that video, okay? <clears throat> so, Copy paste for the incisors and uh, opening up obviously also here, vertical dimension, all no prep. And here just a short bevel for the canines on the cusp, which is already worn down. <clears throat> Lithium disilicate, you see also here, we have seen it in the video, but the same procedure, the same packable composite usually used to do, use. Here we have the upper before and after, the lower before, and, and after with this mix, with this hybrid approach, mixing direct, indirect, and for indirect, cat -cam composite and lithium desilicate. And this is a <clears throat> detail of the anterior area where we have again, and we see very well here, lithium desilicate, and this is the tooth. And this is all composite incisor and the same on the lower. So we have lithium dis desilicate against the same material on the four canines, like on the first molars, and instead composite on the four incisors and the four 
lower. Heading now to conclusion now, I think we have 10, 15 minutes still to go. So we are on, on time. And I'm just going to share, heading to conclusion, another case. Again, this is uh, the, 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 the final uh, restorative treatment plan here was uh, the same as this previous case. So we have the four table legs, uh, first molars and canines, and the rest instead was with the molding approach, we, because we have, you will see now in all the teeth, we have the contact areas, okay? We have a, quite a bit of wear. He's also, he's quite young. He has also 40 years old or, or 38 or 40. Uh, and he has also, he's struggling with not the TMJs. So he doesn't have, he doesn't have TMDs, but he has, uh, some massive problems okay he knows he's aware of this in fact in this kind of case well we we have done our um a lot of data uh, um, we collect a lot of data obviously and one of this was the brax checker and you can see here there's a lot of braxing in, in this patient he has he has attrition and erosion or corrosion and you see here, there's no canine guidance. You can see here, there's a lot of wear and he has muscle uh, problems. We went through uh, also here with the individual approach. And in this patient, we, before, when we have this kind of problems, TMDs or muscle problems, before going, jumping in the mock-ups of our project, well, like in the case bef before be, be, that I shared with you previously, we also managed through the ortho treatment. However, when we have this kind of problem, usually before diving in the, 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 the mock-ups, I want to step back and do a, at the same vertical dimension of what we think is our project to do a, a splint, okay, that the patient wears all day, not when obviously he's eating, even if today we have snap-ons that we could use for this kind of um, step. However, a bite here in order to go and check then how is he feeling with the new vertical, with the new situation, with a static that is a bit different, that has more stability, and let's hear from the patient if things are getting better. So before going through the mechanics. So he's evidence. just telling us that now things are going better. For the training and he's about the builder. He, he, job. He, when he trains, Restaurant. he uses a lot of his muscles. So he's a, quite a, a, a mad guy. However, now things are getting better. Now we can step in the restorative project. This is the vertical dimension of occlusion the, 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 that we decided to work on, and this is the project, the restorative project that actually then we, while we were trying in, doing the try in, as you see here, the of the mockups, we we slightly uh, uh, got down a little bit with the, with the vertical dimension of occlusion, okay? And, okay, here we, we are just going through some step of the copy-paste approach, and again, talking about stabilizing the single index, we have two kind of approaches, the analog, analog Rayleigh uh, line stop reference, which is this that is done by the technician, then we'll see another one later. And you see it here for the single index, uh, we have the index that has inside, as you see here, this, uh, the, the ray line, and what we're going to do now in the mouth, we're going to place, we have done the try in of the index before without anything on the tooth to try and to check the fitting. Eventually we trim it with the surgical blade if it's not fitting correctly. And after that, we place some flow inside here. We go in the mouth and we cure through the index. And this is, we have done the copy paste of the analog rail line stop reference. Analog, because we can do it also today, don't have here the time, but we can do it also digitally this, okay? And also the matrices, the indexes we can do, that we can produce the indexes in a digital, in a digital approach. 
So we have that. And you see here, now we are going to place our uh, indexes, some wedges or better some Teflon to stabilize our uh, matrices. And now, that, now we do the try in of this situation with the matrices to check if is landing correctly or we have some uh, interferences uh, in order then to trim again the, the, the index or, or, or the matrices. You don't want to use maybe the matrices. You can do this kind of approach also placing in the in into the interproximal area some Teflon tape, okay, in order to go and uh, separate the addition, the adjacent dentition. Okay. However, it's with the matrices you have less excess material, but with the Teflon is also a good solution. Now, so we have done the try-in, and again here I want to highlight why uh, with this kind of approach we can stabilize very well our index to do a correct copy paste and then we do the adhesion we place the heated up material now we are going to land on the tooth some excess material is going to flow out heated up material we do then we're going to cure with two curing lights and after that, this is it, the copy paste. We need now to open up the, the, the matrices and to go and do the finishing. And once we have done the finishing, we're going to cement the lithium disilicate on the lower and then on the upper. So the four molars were lithium disilicate. And that is the case that is finished. This is before and this is after. So all copy paste, copy paste and lithium disilicate also here on the canine is lithium disilicate like on the upper and here is another um, a stability um, approach that I want to share with you which is the most common that I use which is the flow line because it's simple uh, uh, the flow line stop reference that we have here so we place our index we have done the try-in is fitting correctly we've just placed some flow apically to our index on the back and we can do it also on the pilot or on the lingual we cure it and then this is our uh, flow usually i use a flow that has a maybe a milk color so a color completely different from the tooth in order to just see it better and so this for us is a reference is a stop reference that gives me a physical because i see it when my when my index is going to land and I will have my matrices and my composite, hidden and composite there, I'm going to see here that I'm fitting correctly. Plus is also something uh, mentally because since I see that is correct the landing, I'm confident that it's going to be correct the copy paste also approach. And you see it here from a different perspective. I'm going to do my addition, heat it up composite, placing, the index, removing excess material. You see here that this is correctly landing here. They are kissing each other, the reference plus the index. And now I've cured, I'm going to remove the excess material. And this is the, uh, after the finishing, I'm going to do the other on the first molar. I'm going to place my uh, indirect restoration lithium disilicate. I've done just slightly, a little bit of in the um, uh, peripheral area, a slight bevel on the molar, and this is before and after. And on the four posterior sextant, we have done the same kind of approach. Okay, now we're stepping on the anterior. He had this tooth that initially we I I did again. I redid my my the endo treatment because was defective so then i did a bleaching on this tooth so a walking bleaching internal bleaching and then i do i did a simple restoration because the project here was for the four central up the uh, uh, incisor upper and lower the copy paste approach while again also also lower and upper canines lithium disilicate so you see here the the bleaching of the tooth uh we extra bleach usually and uh, so here we have the copy paste through the index technique. You see here one, and then I'm going to do the other three. 
here I'm going to go and place this is the try in of the of the indirect to check the fitting precision the color and all that stuff and here you can see very well I would say the only preparation that I do on this canine which is a short bevel 45 degrees very short and defined bevel you see it also here that's it and then all on the lingual and here on the occlusal side no kind of uh, preparation we do clean everything and then we do our adhesion and this is the final uh, situation lithium disilicate and the canines and all the rest is composite and this is the bleached uh, tooth same kind of approach on the upper you see again here we are far away from the gum around two, three millimeters. Sextant two is the most uh, uh, difficult one because it's more a full molding while on, on the posterior sextant. And then sextant five, the reference is at the equatorial area while instead here we are around in this area, two, three millimeters away from uh, soft tissue, okay? And it's a full molding because it's also palatal. And this is before, and uh, and after you see also here just again to highlight the copy paste this is the project that the technician did and you see also here all the copy paste of this kind of texture that we have uh, here and uh, um, this is from the the functional side again lithium disilicate you see it here very well we are far away from soft tissue and you see here composite and initially we had this kind of uh, um, of uh, shape here, but with the phonetic wasn't working very well. So we went to this kind of shape for the final. In fact, this is the copy paste also on the palatal side of this situation. <clears throat> so this is the opening of the vertical, the wax up where we then slightly went a little bit down. And this is our, these are the two final, um, uh, alginates after the restoration, after that I've done the occlusal adjustments in static and the dynamic, okay? And so what we do usually there, I get another um, uh, Brax checker and I give it to the patient to use it one night. Here, just apologize because it's just a few days after the, 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 the restoration of sextant two and sextant five, and you see we have some inflammation, but just to share with you the fact that we want to check that the static and the, 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 uh, the dynamic is all okay. And I have contacts point with my shim stock, eight microns from the second molar to the canine. And then instead is shimming. I don't want contacts on the interior area because I want some free space for my a overjet otherwise if i have contact i wouldn't have overjet okay so you see here until the contact the canine okay is i have my contacts instead here is shimming again also from lateral to lateral and then here again canine on canine i have my contact in order to uh, give stability to my static occlusion, and then also for the dynamic. <laughs> okay, I've got the first and second molar, and now I'm going to just try the dynamic to see how it's working, how everything is going. I don't want it too steep, but quite smooth. Uh, and this is the, the, the situation. And just to share with you briefly, the pro this is the initial prac checker that I did, and I gave for one night, on uh, on the initial situation and this is after and uh, uh, on my restorative work and we see here that we have the canine guidance that are working what i don't like that i want to i'm going to adjust because i've done my adjustments in the clinic in the chair but with the patient that is sitting is not lying down but is sitting up but maybe sometimes something is missing okay my mistake or whatever and so that's why a brax checker to use it one night can give me some feedbacks that I didn't have in the clinic. And that's why there is also the white spots plus the blue spots that I are the movements, movements that the patient did in the clinic on this brax checker. But 
in my occlusional adjustments, and you see here on the anterior, for example, there's no blue here. So in the clinic, he's not going there. So for me, this is an interference, is an interference that happens in the night. So I don't want this kind of situation. And I will just go and do a slight trimming here, either on the upper, on the composite, or on the lower. Plus also here for me, these are interferences. So I just go and polish a little bit. So a very, very slight trimming on the situation with, with the can I guidance. I don't want this kind of situation because for me are interferences. Okay, so then heading really to conclusion, I would say we are in time because it's nine o'clock. I just would like to share with you this, uh, I would say fantastic event, not because I will be there in September, so at the Panky Symposium in Amelia Island, but because the, 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 the location they've told me, Lee has told me that is fantastic, it's really beautiful, it's on the, on the beach, so fantastic end of September. And I think because the Banking Institute, from my perspective, is, um, I can't wait, as I say here, to join this unique blend of professional integrity and friendship um, in, in such a humble atmosphere, which I think is a nice blend that happens, from my perspective, only at uh, with the thank you friends. Okay, so try and be there because I think it's going to be very nice to share not only professional growth, but a lot of other stuff in a fantastic place. So here we have also the contact. And I think also this is going to put in the chat all the info for you. Plus the month later in October, uh, I'm not going to rush as I did tonight, but if somebody's interested, we are going to just have two days with this hands-on course, October, as you see here, on this kind of approach. Again, we don't be hands-on, so just to go in details, and we have two days where we can really also with the, a, a lot of videos and a lot of images with the step-by-step -step to go really in details. And again, you have the contacts here, and this is going to share this with you. And again, you can write me for any or anything. I also have my uh, website where you can download the articles, my online courses here. And thank you for, for your attention. Thank you to the Panky Institute, to you, Daisy, that organize everything. And uh, to Lee Brady also for this kind invitation.